Hello, mortgage fans. Um, so this week, we're going to look into inflation and interest rates in a lot more detail as inflation in the UK hit 5.4%, uh, the highest level since about 1992, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, so we're going to dive into that because that does have a direct impact in lending. A um, couple of side thoughts I had before we dive into that. Um, firstly is how are your New Year's resolutions holding up? Uh, we're getting to the end of the month now. A lot of people do dry January. So 23 days in, how are you going? Are you doing the running and the eating and all the things that you shouldn't be doing the other way around, really? Uh, I must admit, I nearly had a wobble this week uh, with my daily exercise. I think it was minus three. And had it not been for my dog, giving me a bit of a nudge because he loves his morning run these days now, uh, making a bit of a rod for my own back, I probably would have buckled. So uh, something to be learned there. Um, separately as well, um, I managed to watch uh, Don't Look Up on Netflix uh, last night, which was hysterical. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth looking at. Um, all the way through it, besides sort of laughing, it really did get me thinking of how frighteningly accurate a lot of that is. And I've just had images of that's what a number 10 Downing Street briefing looks like. Um, so if you don't know what I mean by that, watch the film, put the two together. It's just disturbingly accurate. Uh, but anyway, um, for other such film reviews, I, I don't do, but maybe we should do a little sideline in that. But what we do do um, is look at what happens in the mortgage world. So one thing that happens, because inflation keeps going up at the minute, the base rate was raised in December, uh, so it clearly hasn't had the impact uh, that people wanted. Now, what happens typically when these sort of change in the market happens is you get a range of views. Uh, something I've done for a very, very long time now um, is when you look at particularly financial markets or anything that's sort of any sort of predictor really, is what you should look at is credible data points. I tend to have a bit of a range of people I look at and data that I look at. And then what I tend to do is sort of plant my opinion sort of in the middle, um, which I know is a very unsexy way of doing things, but it turns out pretty good. And if you're not sure about that, look at some old stuff I've done. I've actually been very proud of late of how my sort of predictions are, are sort of cropping up. Um, so that's what I tend to do. Uh, and sort of conversely, it's all about credible data points. So for example, if you're getting vaccination information from Facebook, you're probably not looking in the right place. So it's all about looking in the right place. And specifically what I've done here, just to give you a bit of a, an idea of the way I sort of broach things. Um, firstly, when I had a look at HSBC, uh, they were on the record last year as expecting three base rate rises this year, which seemed really bullish at the time, but maybe not so much now. Uh, in fact, they're given very specific uh, predictions. They expect the Bank of England to raise rates by a quarter percent in their February, May and August meetings, meaning that the end of 2022, the bank base rate will be at 1%. Um, that does seem punchy still. Um, and the reason why I think that's punchy, again, besides the methodology I just talked through, um, I looked at a speech from the new um, MPC committee members. Now, the MPC is the Monetary Policy Committee. It's the rate setting section of the Bank of England. Uh, there are nine members, and the newest one is Catherine L. Mann. And I love the use of the middle initial L there. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Michael J. Fox. And why don't we do that more often? Maybe that's a separate thought. Um, she had a speech uh, on the 21st of January. Um, which you're very welcome to read online. It's on the uh, Bank of England website and I'll link it in our notes as well. Um, remember, I do these things so you don't have to. Um, 12 pages of notes and graphs and stuff, uh, which all sort of alluded to that um, inflation will come back in what they call the mid term, mid to sort of long term. So they no, certainly last year, the view was that inflation was transitory. So meaning that it was going to spike at the end of this year and come back this year clearly not going to happen. So it's something that policy members are going to have to deal with now. Now, as ever, if you read anything from the Bank of England or any sort of uh, really sort of um, rate setting person or uh, policy advisor is what I was looking for there, it tends to be a bit vague because they don't need to be held out to dry too much. But if you read between the lines of what they said, um, it was very much thinking that the Bank of England, sorry, the HSBC approach was very bullish. They seem a bit more dovish, meaning they don't think rates will go up quite that high. Uh, that did, I think there was a really good article on the BBC or Reuters, I can't remember which now, but quite a good sort of write up on that um, in the week. So have a read through that if you like. One thing I did pick out was very interesting, uh, which is pretty much the last paragraph of the speech, if I remember correctly. And, I, and I'll read the quote because I thought it was very, very interesting. Um, quote reads, um, in addition to the external forces of demand and supply, that have loomed large in the evolution of UK inflation in 2021. Going forward, there's going to be another imp important external relevant factor for the UK economic performance. 
Policy actions by other central banks have cross-border ramifications, which will be important for the committee to consider. But that is a topic for another speech. Nice little cliffhanger there, Catherine. I like what you've done. Um, so, yeah, what that's saying in English is that if other European or uh, American or really any sort of Western democracies start raising interest rates, it's difficult for us not to. So a big indicator of what the Bank of England is looking at there. So um, one thing I will be keeping an eye on is are other central banks raising interest rates or are they not? Because that does look like a big thing that Bank of England are looking at. And that's why I do read 12 pages of notes, because you get these little gems. Uh, but again, uh, I do it so you don't have to. Um, so what does that mean for mortgage rates? That's all well and lovely. Um, but what does that mean in a real practical sense if you're looking to get a mortgage anytime soon? Now, firstly, one thing that's really important to understand, when interest rates are looking to rise, banks move their products ahead of when the Bank of England are going to raise rates. I'll give you a very specific example. So mortgage rates hit the lowest point ever um, in September last year. In September 21 is when rates were at the very, very lowest. And just to pick out an example here, the best five year fixed rate deal you could get in September was 0.91%. Today, the best you can get is 1.44% for the very same product. Now that's a 0.53% rise when the Bank of England have only increased rates by 0.15%, which is really backing up the point I'm trying to drive home, is that banks are going to raise their products well ahead of the Bank of England doing it. And we're seeing it really week on week at the minute, where rates are going up by sort of 0 0.05, 0 0.1 here and there, and it happens over time. So, you know, if you were quoted back in the summer and sort of saying, well, yeah, you get a sub 1% rate, the only sub 1% rates now are variable products, which we probably wouldn't recommend depending on your situation, but something to bear in mind. Something specific you can do if you're looking to refinance this year. So if you've got your remortgage coming up this year, you can book your product six months ahead of when it's available. Now that's when we're contacting our clients because you can imagine if all these things are true and everyone's no, one, no one's really arguing about rates are going to go up just by how much and when. Um, so if you can book a rate today, that's more or less guaranteed to be cheaper than it will be in six months' time when your deal's up. So don't leave it late. Please talk to a qualified advisor or even better still, talk to us. Um, but it's not all bad news. Rates aren't sort of creeping up across the board. Another dynamic I wanted to point out is that if you've got a smaller deposit, so 5 or 10% deposit, those rates are actually coming down still. And again, specific example, um, the Bank of England, uh, sorry, not the Bank of England, it was in the budget, sorry, back in April last year. Um, the government announced a guarantee for 95% mortgages. What that meant was they would pick up any losses if banks made um, losses in that area. So a guarantee, so not funding, but just saying they would pick up the slack if that went wrong. Um, that got lenders lending back at 95% because they weren't doing it because of COVID. Um, the product rates you could have got around the time were sort of 5%, sort of 4.95, 5.05 in that sort of area. Um, today, the best 95% mortgage you can get is 2.5% for a five-year fixed. So prices have halved. Really old school sort of banking analogy for you is that if you've got a sort of an average mortgage rate, it's normally about 1% above cost of funds. So if the Bank of England is at 0.25% today, if your situation is nice and straightforward, you should be really paying a mortgage rate about 1.25. If it's like super low risk, so really great uh, situation for you and a sort of really low percentage of the property you're buying at, you might be under 1% and you might well pay over 1% if it's deemed a bit more risky. So if there's been any credit issues in the past or a smaller deposit. So always a nice little benchmark there is the mortgage rate you're going to get is roughly about 1% above where the Bank of England base rate would be. That's something to sort of keep an eye on. Um, but it's good to see that if you've got the high risk loans as the smaller deposit area, the costs are still coming down. Now, what does that mean with market rates? So unsurprisingly, um, market rates were up last week, um, seeing what's happened with uh, inflation carrying on. Um, five year money is at 1.22%. Uh, two year money is at 1.17% and LIBOR is at 0.561%. Um, so pretty much everyone they're predicting that interest rates will be rising over the next three months, two years or five years, depending on window you're looking at. Now, how that translates into best mortgage rates, I already touched on the five-year deal being at 1.44. Um, a two-year fixed rate is at 1.29. And as I already said as well, actually, uh, the best track is at 0.99% of you banks of that area. Now, as I've alluded to, the rate you will be offered will be dependent on your situation and deposit. But they're sort of the benchmark rates or certainly the market leading rates. And then we sort of work backwards from there. So that's it for this week. Um, hope you enjoyed it and catch up with you next week.